Is LeetCode dead? Meta just told employees they're allowing coding candidates to use AI assistance during interviews. Companies like Zapier and Stripe got rid of their LeetCode style coding challenges years ago. And meanwhile, traditional LeetCode interviews are getting absolutely destroyed by cheating tools that can solve any algorithmic puzzle in seconds. The entire foundation of how companies hire software engineers is being redefined in 2025. If you're trying to break into tech or advance your career, the strategies that worked even last year are becoming obsolete. Some major companies are embracing AI in interviews instead of fighting it, and engineers who adapt first are going to have a massive advantage. In this video, I'm going to reveal what's really happening behind the scenes at major tech companies, show you some interview formats that are replacing LeetCode, and give you a roadmap to prepare for this new era of technical hiring. Hi friends, I'm Maddie. I'm a senior software engineer who previously worked at Google and internet other big tech companies like Amazon, IBM, and Microsoft. I myself have been on both sides of the interview table. I've solved hundreds of LeetCode problems interviewed at hundreds of companies, and I was an interviewer for Google while I was there. And I'm here to tell you that everything is changing. Companies are moving away from the very interview process that I went through to get hired at Google as a new grad and my current company as a senior software engineer. We're witnessing the biggest shift in technical hiring in decades. Let's start with some context. For the past 15 years, LeetCode has been the backbone of technical interviews. The platform has over 3,000 algorithmic questions, millions of users, and basically every single computer science student has spent countless hours grinding through traverse a binary tree and reverse a linked list problems. Almost every major company asks LeetCode style coding challenges to evaluate potential new hires. But here's what finally broke this system, sophisticated AI cheating tools. The most notorious example is Roy Lee, a Columbia student who created an AI tool specifically designed to solve leak code problems in real time during interviews by generating coding solutions and explanations from screenshots designed to be completely undetectable on screen shares. Roy ended up using his tool to pass technical interviews and secure offers at Amazon, Meta, and TikTok and other companies. This incident forced the entire industry to confront an uncomfortable reality. If AI can solve these problems better than humans, what exactly are we testing? Roy's tool essentially proved that leak code interviews had become a game that AI could win consistently. So the solution is, of course, fighting AI cheating with AI. Recently, Meta sent internal communications to employees announcing that they're going to soon allow coding candidates to use AI assistance during interviews. The reasoning is that it'll be more representative of the developer environment that those future hires will work in and also make the aforementioned LLM-based cheating less effective. Think about the genius of this approach. Instead of trying to prevent candidates from using AI, which was proving quite difficult to actually enforce, they're instead making it part of the evaluation. Now, Meta and other companies can assess how well you collaborate with AI tools, not just whether you can solve riddles without them. This makes total sense when you consider Mark Zuckerberg's vision. He's publicly said that AI will soon effectively function as mid-level engineers at Meta, writing most of their code. We at Meta are going to have an AI that can effectively be a sort of mid-level engineer that can write code. If that's a future they want to build toward, why wouldn't they hire people who can work effectively in that environment? What's fascinating is the contrast with some other companies. For example, Anthropic, which makes Claude, another popular AI assistant, specifically bans AI use during their interviews. They want to see raw human capability first, then enhance it with AI later. It's a completely different philosophy. But Meta's approach may be the new trend. Microsoft has started testing collaborative coding sessions where candidates work with AI to build features. The evaluation focuses on how effectively you guide the AI, review its suggestions, and make strategic technical decisions. After all, there is a massive disconnect between leak code interview performance and real job performance. In my actual work, I've never had to, for example, implement a binary search tree from scratch, but I spent countless hours debugging distributed systems, optimizing database queries, designing APIs that can handle millions of requests, and working with PMs and other stakeholders to translate business requirements into technical specifications. The skills that make you good at leak code, pattern recognition, algorithm thinking, feed under pressure, those are useful, but there may be 20% of what you actually do as a software engineer. The other 80% involves understanding business requirements, making architectural trade-offs, collaborating with your team, and iterating on complex systems over time and maintaining them. I've had friends at Google who barely passed the coding round and needed additional technical rounds since they were deemed borderline by our hiring committee, but they actually ended up getting promoted very fast and doing amazing work while in the actual job. This disconnect coupled by the cheating finally forced companies to ask, what are we actually trying to measure? 
based on my conversations with hiring managers and my own recent interview experience, here's what's actually becoming valuable. Problem decomposition. Can you take a vague business requirement and break it down into technical components? For example, if someone says, we need to make this feature faster, can you identify whether that's a front-end performance issue, a database bottleneck, or a caching problem? System integration skills. Can you work with existing code bases and understand how changes ripple through complex systems? Most engineering work involves modifying and extending existing code, not building everything from scratch. AI collaboration. This is the big one. Companies want engineers who could effectively use AI tools to be more productive. Are you good at prompting? Can you review AI generated code critically? Can you use AI to understand and explore different approaches to a problem? And technical communication. Can you explain complex technical concepts to non-technical stakeholders? Can you document those decisions and participate in architectural discussions? These communication skills are becoming more valuable than raw coding velocity. So given this, let me walk you through some of the new interview formats I'm seeing. The first is architectural walkthroughs. Instead of solving algorithms, candidates walk through the architecture of previous systems they've built. The interviewer will ask about things like design decisions, trade-offs, and how they handle scale. This tests system thinking and real engineering experience. Next, we have live debugging sessions. Companies will give candidates a broken piece of code and ask them to fix it while thinking out loud. This mirrors actual engineering work much more closely than implementing algorithms from scratch. And then we have collaborative building. Some companies have candidates pair program with an existing engineer to add a feature to a simplified version of the product. They evaluate things like collaboration skills, code quality, and ability to work within existing constraints. And finally, we have technical case studies. Candidates analyze real world technical problems and propose solutions. For example, our mobile app is crashing for users in XYZ regions. How would you investigate and fix this? It tests debugging skills, systematic thinking, and practical knowledge. If you're a software engineer preparing for interviews right now, here's my strategic advice. One, build substantial projects. Don't just code along with tutorials. Identify real problems and build solutions. For example, maybe create a tool that scrapes job postings and uses AI to match them with your skills. Or build a dashboard that visualizes data from public APIs. Make sure your projects demonstrate full stack thinking. Learn system design at any level. Even if you're applying for junior roles, understand the basics of how web apps work end to end. Know about databases, caching, load balancing, and API design. You don't need to architect real systems from millions of users, but you should understand how the pieces fit together. This is important because even though new grads traditionally were never asked system design, I'm seeing a trend of companies asking more and more systemic thinking questions for younger and younger engineers. Practice with AI tools. Get comfortable with GitHub Copilot, ChatGPT, Claude, and other coding assistants. But more importantly, learn how to use them effectively. For example, practice prompting them to explain code, generate test cases, or suggest optimizations. Companies want to see that you can successfully amplify your productivity with AI. Develop your technical storytelling. Practice explaining your projects clearly. For example, what problem were you solving? What approaches did you consider? Why did you make specific technical decisions? What would you do differently in retrospect? These stories demonstrate engineering maturity. Some companies ask for this explicitly in interviews. Since we're in this transition period of traditional leak code questions versus what will be actually here in the world of AI, you unfortunately still need to prepare for both of these types of interview formats. Here's how I'd allocate your preparation time. If you're interviewing at companies that haven't yet adopted AI-assisted interviews, still spend time on leak code fundamentals. Focus on understanding the common patterns rather than just blindly memorizing solutions. Leak code 75 or blind 75 lists are really great starting points. However, I say that even for traditional companies, spend more time on practical skills, build projects, contribute to open source, and practice explaining your technical decisions. Meta's move signals that other big tech companies will likely follow suit within the next year. Absolutely start incorporating AI into your workflow now. Don't wait until interviews to figure out how to use these tools effectively. Make them part of your daily development process. Practice using things like GitHub Copilot, ChatGPT, Cursor, or Claude for different coding tasks, and learn to critically evaluate their suggestions. And remember that regardless of how interview formats change, there will always be skills that will be valuable. Firstly, we have problem solving ability. The core skill of breaking down complex problems into manageable pieces will never go out of style, whether you're solving algorithms or actually building projects. Next, we have learning agility. Technology changes quickly. Companies want engineers who can pick up new frameworks, languages, and tools quickly. Show that you're constantly learning and adapting. Next, quality mindset. Make sure that you're writing clean, maintainable code with good test coverage. Also, 
think about things like edge cases and air handling. These fundamentals matter in any context. And finally, last but not least, collaboration skills. Software engineering is a team sport. No matter how good you are at coding or how well you prompt the AI, you will need to work with other engineers, PMs, designers, and stakeholders. Communication and empathy are becoming real differentiators. To sum up my thoughts here, the death of lead code represents something bigger. Our industry is finally starting to evaluate engineers based on skills that might actually be relevant for the day-to-day -day job. This transition will be scary if you've invested tons of time in lead code preparation, but I actually think it's quite exciting. It means that people who love building things, solving real problems, and working with modern tools will have more opportunities to shine than ever. And that's all I have for you in this video. Thank you so much for watching, and please feel free to hit that subscribe button if you want to see more software engineering resources and interviewing insights. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.